So you want something that's a little bit more reshaped. I see that your sides and like your back is like really overgrown right now. Yeah, I don't like it when it like balloons. Out. Yeah, expand. I mean like luckily you have like pretty flatter hair. We'll work on that for sure. So this haircut, I'm going to be performing and demonstrating uh, a nice mod. It's going to be a pretty mid-length mod with the fringe just sitting nice and tight against his eyebrow area and then in the back i want to create a nice shape i feel like going square might just be a little bit too much of on the heavier side so i'm probably going with something more round and then on the side i'm still going to build up that nice square to triangular shape yeah so let's just get right into it i get a lot of questions asking uh what kind of tools i use i feel like this is something that Probably a lot of beginner barbers want to learn more about just because like I've definitely had a time where I was confused about what type of scissors to use, what type of combs to use, etc. So obviously we're not going to be using any clipper work or um, anything that's going to cause him to have a fade or a lineup. So I'm going to be using mainly shear work to execute this haircut. So we're going to start off with my shears. I use um, Mizutani. Um, I feel like these are a great scissor. It's a little bit more on the costly side, around the thousand dollars, but it still works really great and has a nice blade movement to it. Uh, the combs I like to use are any type of precision comb. Today I choose to use Sessibon. And for clips, I like to use YS Park claw clips, and then anything more precise, smaller clips for precision. Yeah, so like I started off in high school as a way to like make money and then from there i kind of just really like fell in love with the craft when i like joined the barber shop that like did a lot of like education and then from there i just kept going with it and then yeah i ended up dropping out of college to pursue hair all right so like we're still in the process of fully saturating his hair make sure the roots to the ends completely saturated with water. Another, um, this is kind of like a tool, no, no, not a tool. This is a product that I like to use in my classes and also in my day-to-day -day cutting. I like to spray in a little bit of this uh, leave-in conditioner by Pravana. The reason why I like this so much is it, it allows me to like keep the hair moisturized all throughout the haircut. So like a couple sprays of this is just gonna naturally hydrate his hair entirely so like i don't have to worry about re-watering it down again after each section so like a couple sprays of this is gonna allow me to just keep this hair nice and moisturized but also the moisture is just gonna stay and lock in throughout the haircut so let's jump right into sectioning i feel like sectioning might be probably the most important part of this haircut because you could cut it in the perfect shape but if the main sections aren't sectioned perfectly then like you're not really creating a good foundation for the haircut so i like to always start with this haircut with sectioning out the top of his head so how i'm gonna start is i'm just gonna start by feeling the round okay so you notice that his corners like to dip sort of around the parietal ridge area so he actually has a pretty triangular head shape although it looks round because of the hair he has a pretty triangular head shape built and it peaks in the top right here so it's gonna go corner and then corner so these two corners are where i'm gonna focus the transition point for the guide and i like to always start at the recession point so you can see there's a corner built right here and there's a corner built right here so that's the first corner that i'm gonna start with and i'm just gonna bring it back diagonally slightly all the way until i hit probably the crown area of his haircut where the apex kind of like ends into the crown that's where i'm gonna stop so boom Okay. Second section, I'm going to go from that crown apex transition zone straight to the other side of the parietal ridge. Okay. So imagine you're creating a box right now. Okay. Super easy and nice and simple. Now from here, you're going to go from this corner and you're going to match it back to the corner or the recession point of his forehead. So remember, we went slightly diagonal into it so we're gonna start right there bring it a little bit down now just so that we could kind of grab all the hair what i do is i, I place my palm where his hair is all lay and i'll just bring it into the palm okay one two grab the other side three okay just until everything is pretty clean from here i grab and i twist okay one more grab and i twist from here, twist, and then I'm just gonna add a second clip. 
So that we could lock in that placement. We have a nice square box on top, slightly going diagonal into the crown. Okay, so we can remove more weight throughout this transition zone here. And we have a nice solid baseline to work with, with the sides and the back. Now, the second thing I want to always keep in mind is this is too much of a section to work with. It's way too big, right? If I were to be like, okay, I'm going to start cutting from here. How am I going to know which zone I'm ending in, right? You're not going to know that. So what I want to do is I want to create two more sections that I can just section off and not worry about. Now, right here, very, 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 very important part. A lot of people tend to think like, okay, the sides to the back, right? All right, so... Now we kind of have the top part sectioned off. Resaturate the hair a little bit more. And I'm just gonna section off side to back. Okay, side to back. So crucial because sides and back, that's what people see from the side and back profile. People that aren't worried about the fade, let's just say, right? People are really worried about the top. Like you were pretty worried about the top too, right? Now, what I know is that you're worried about the top, but what people actually get to see is the side and the back. So what people are seeing and what you're feeling are two different things. So this is a very important part of the haircut because this is like the visual aspect of the haircut, the side and the back, right? Very important, as you can see too, as soon as I sectioned off the top to the side and the back, the side and the back is almost 80% of the haircut already. So the top is like almost like a cherry on top, like a finishing touch. And the side and the back is like kind of like the main portfolio. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna section off the side to the back. My favorite sectioning technique, uh, I'm gonna be using the radial section from that corner straight down to the bottom or the back of his ear. So I'm just imagining that guide right there, right? That guide I'm gonna section off clean and once I reach the back of the ear, pinch it, boom. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna separate that part because I'm not worried about that right now at all. Second part I'm gonna do is just repeat that exact same step that I did on the right side, on the left. So on the left, I'm just gonna repeat that step straight up, back to the back of the ear, boom. And what do we call this section? the radial section. Okay, so I'm kind of trying to grab a visual aspect of things. So the choice of length in the back, I actually really like it. I like the choice of length that he has in the back. I feel like it could be a nice cool wolf cut mullet look, but the weight I definitely don't like. So in the back and the length, after we dry everything up, we could always shorten it down. So I'm not even going to worry about the bottom area right now. I'm only going to work with layering on this top portion right here because we know it's way too heavy, right? Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is saturate the hair one more time. And I'm going to grab my first section, okay? So vertical guide, the vertical guide right down the middle. Second guide right down the middle. Right, so now we have a super clean section to work with in the back now. I'm gonna grab that layer and I'm gonna imagine a nice round shape going in and a nice round shape going out. So this is called concave layering. Concave meaning it's not gonna be the same in length. It's just gonna have a lot of S motions, right? Concave meaning it's caving in and out. So we're gonna cave out, cave in. So it's just gonna be nice S shape right there, okay? So first thing we're gonna do we're gonna pull it directly off base. I'm just gonna cut that layer just to the round of his head. Now we're just also gonna go off base, continue that round shape. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab that section and we're gonna over direct it off base, meaning we're not gonna over direct it this way. We're gonna over direct it right off the base of where the roots landed for this section. Okay, so nice tension, you wanna grab it tight. Boom, like that, check your guide. Okay, and just blend that in. So I'm leaving it longer towards the end because we wanna retain that weight. No, retain that length. And as I'm reaching the corner area, this transitional zone for his haircut, I'm slightly pivoting the section down, right? So I'm just imagining the sections because it's getting a lot more wider down here and it's still tighter up here. So as I'm going like this, I'm gonna pivot it into that section. 
if that makes sense. Grab that guide. And same thing here, no mechanics change. Nicely off base. First thing we're gonna do for the top is after the section clip is out, we're gonna split that in half right there. And what I want to do is I want to create a nice guide horizontally so that we can sit in that fringe line. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab that guide right underneath the eyebrow. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab a nice horizontal guide from this middle to the recession point of his haircut. And I'm just going to push everything forward. Boom, razor that in. And I'm creating a square line, so it's just gonna go nice and square all throughout the haircut. And we're just gonna match that into the sides too. Okay, so now we have one nice guideline that's just going right in. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab another section the same way I did on each side, and we're gonna bring it down again. We want the front to look really filled and heavy. We don't want to make it feel any lighter than it is now. We want it to make it feel more heavier. So we're going to go in one more time with one length, right? And boom, now we see that there's a guide underneath it. Just going to match that in. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to match that in. And then we're just going to match it in until the guide isn't really visible anymore. Now to me, this looks pretty heavy. This is enough weight that could be in the front. Now I'm just gonna worry about my layers on top. So all I'm gonna do is grab that guide from the middle. So from here, how I like to grab that guide in the middle too is like, I like to go based off the nose. So the nose is basically gonna be right in the middle. So I'm just gonna take a look from the mirror, go from the nose, go straight down. Okay, section it up. Same thing with the other side, go straight down. Okay, we're just gonna section it off and then clip it. Okay, so section it off, clip it. So now we have the central zone and I'm, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this up and what we're gonna be able to find in the front here is a guide. See that? We're not gonna cut this off. We're gonna leave all that and we're just gonna layer the middle here. Right where the shortest point is, right there. We pick it up, this connection, right? We're gonna start layering it, starting there, okay? I want to create a nice square shape on top. So I'm going to over direct everything back to previous, back to previous, back to previous, back to previous until we reach the end. Now, once I reach the end, I push everything over and make sure everything's blended. If I see anything that's unblended, just point cut into that. This is like a very, very, very important tip that a lot of people be forgetting when they do a mod haircut. You want to create a nice triangular guy. I also see a lot of people like being like, Oh, I went from point A to point B. Why does my haircut turn out like this? It's cause like, you're not really like visually creating the haircut. So you gotta be more visual and be mindful of like what you're cutting and what you're not cutting right now, right? So there's obviously, this haircut looks nicely blended, right? It looks perfectly even and it looks like there's not much to touch. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull this out. I'm not worried about making a section right now. I'm visually blending this in, right? I'm gonna grab my feather razor. So right here, see that heavy disconnection? So that's where I'm just gonna be feathering in. Okay, so next side, visual connection. Pull everything to this side, right? And all I'm doing is I'm gonna grab the hair, visually blend it in. I was actually confused by this when I first heard it too. Like, like, what does that mean? Visually blending it in? You're basically not being technical or precise at all. You're just cutting it in an area where you think it looks good and where you feel like it needs to be more blended. So like, it's not 90 degree layer. It's not um, over directed by previous. For this haircut, I'm gonna pre-style it with a little bit of Mason sea salt spray. Okay. Give it that nice grit. Once that's spread out, I'm gonna go in straight with my blow dryer. Now you guys see where this calic is right here in the back? There's a crown calic right here. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put everything on high and I'm literally gonna go in clockwise motion.
All right, so this next part of the haircut, I'm really just gonna be visually cutting in where I want it to lay nicer, where I want to remove weight, where I want to bring out the shape a little bit more. So I'm gonna be doing something called personalization. I'm gonna kind of add some areas where I feel like we could just kind of enhance and bring out a little bit more flavor to the haircut. So I'm gonna be going in, kind of softening areas up that I want to. I'm really just grabbing sections, nothing too precise at the moment. I'm just gonna soften areas up that feels like a little bit too heavy for me. Next section found. Okay, pick all that up. If it feels a little bit too heavy, I'm immediately gonna soften it, right? And then here, just cause like the hairs might be a little bit too hard to pick up, you could just slice into these areas. So yeah, that is kind of good for this portion right here, right? Everything's just already sitting a lot nicer, a lot less weight, I can feel it already. So when I am post-styling the haircut, I like to basically use two things, a hairspray and then also a styling comb, okay? Today I'm just gonna use the best mesh comb just so that I can really bring out texture. So we're gonna focus on kind of enhancing the look, right? So this crown area right here, I wanna bring out some of this weight. So, so I'm just gonna... Spray and lock, okay? Spray and lock, spray and lock, okay? See how the shape is really brought out already? It brings out that shape, right? So I'm just gonna spray and lock in areas that I feel like could be brought out a little bit more. Okay, you're really just playing with the hair now and allowing everything to sit exactly where you want it to fall. This is kind of where you don't have to be so precise, you know, styling is Kind of like an art form in itself so you can just kind of do whatever you want and you can move the hair however you want okay so this is like basically my final look for recolier today nice mod transitioned into um all around kind of overall similar length and hair yeah so we like to emphasize movement and really bring out a uh, shape so we went in with a nice round shape in the back back into a concave shape so we could leave the layers a little bit longer towards the ends. On the sides, we went in with a nice layering technique too, but kind of kept them more um, round slash triangular in a way. So we could keep the bottom a little bit longer than the top. In the front, we kind of went in with a nice heavy one length so that we can kind of create the fringe nice and heavy. I could touch this up for hours and make it look even better, but I am gonna stop now just cause I feel like I've reached a point where I'm very satisfied with the final look. So yep, you see how the movement, all the layers are laying super nice. 